Hi there, this is Dave and welcome to the Top 10 Best Game Boy Color JRPG Hidden Gems. After the success of the original Game Boy, Nintendo, in all their wisdom, basically went out and created a portable NES. And let me tell ya, I loved this thing. It came out whenever I was in high school, and I played it well into my college years until it was replaced by the portable SNES or Game Boy Advance. While this is normally known as a kind of stopgap system, it still has some great games on it, and many of them hidden. So I am here to help you out and let you know what some of the more obscure titles are. Number 10, Azure Dreams. By now, I'm sure we all know that I hate random dungeons, but despite having them, I still liked this game. First released on the PlayStation and then ported with added content to the Game Boy Color, the goal is to explore the Tower of Monstrosity, which changes form each time that you enter, and whenever you leave, all your levels are reset to 1, except for any monsters that you recruit, so it's kind of like a cross between a roguelike and Pokemon. As you explore, you'll encounter traps, items, and eggs to help you proceed, as well as treasure hunters and other like-minded adventurers who are also climbing the tower. While the battle system is kind of turn-based, combat is mercifully simple, where you just kind of run into an enemy, a menu appears, you do your damage, and the guys die. It might be simplistic, but it's fun, and that is what really matters. Number 9, Magi Nation. This game is a product of its time. If you were around and actively into the RPG scene during the release of this game, it's no doubt that you've heard of it, and all the hype that surrounded it. However, if you weren't, and you're only getting into this system later on in life, then chances are you're like, what in the world is this? Well, as someone who lived it, let me explain. Magi Nation is a video game based upon a card game, akin to like something like Magic the Gathering, and they released this game to help bolster the sales of the card game, and then also later on released a television show about it too. They were really pulling out all the stops, but to no avail. As the card game eventually failed, the show was canceled, and all of the proposed game sequels were shuttered too. As you can see, it's pretty good for a licensed game, but it's decidedly trapped in the early 2000s. Number 8, Survival Kids. This is an extremely unique RPG that combines action combat with survival mechanics. The story follows a 10-year-old kid who becomes shipwrecked on a deserted island and is forced to learn how to survive on his own. On your journey, you're going to encounter ferocious animals, a monkey companion, foodstuffs, as well as a multitude of other items and weapons to assist you in the wilderness and to help you fend off all the wild animals. On your journey, you're going to stumble across the secrets of the island and even uncover eight different endings depending on the choices that you make as you play. Similar to like a choose your own adventure book, not all of the endings are happy. And also, considering that most games of the time, especially portable games, only had one ending, having eight was no small feat. Number 7, Legend of the River King 2. I know a lot of you out there just love your fishing in JRPGs, though personally, I don't. I would much rather just get in the main game, rather than having to sit around getting arthritis trying to reel in all the fish that I can. However, here, the entire game is centered around that activity, so they did make it pretty compelling, while also still being relaxing. At the get-go, you have a choice of two different characters, and depending on who you choose, the story will play out entirely differently, so there's tons of replay value, and this is a game that you can sink quite a number of hours into as you fish, dive, pick flowers, catch bugs, and even fight battles against the forest creatures. If you're a fan of Harvest Moon, Rune Factory, or Stardew Valley, be sure to pick this one up. Number 6, Bomberman Quest. Bomberman games were always some of my favorites to play with my friends. Before Super Smash Brothers and tournament fighting games came out, this is what we had. I remember growing up going over to my friend Rebecca's house and playing Super Bomberman against four people using her multi-tap. She was the only person in the neighborhood who had one, and it was a blast. No pun intended. So when her Bomberman Quest came out, I was all about it. Even though it's not really an RPG, it's more of like a Zelda game than anything else. But 16-year-old me didn't care. I loved it. It utilizes kind of like the Link's Awakening engine as you go through different biome-themed zones, and you pick up new and more powerful bombs to blast your way through all the monsters. 
Number 5. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets Yeah, I know that this is a game based upon popular culture, and the rule of thumb is, if it's a game based upon popular culture, then it's automatically terrible! See The Simpsons. But this gem bucks that trend. There's something like nine different versions or cash-ins of this game, but surprisingly, the little underdog in the Game Boy Color is easily the best version. The story follows the book to a T, even including events that the movie left out. Hogwarts and the surroundings are expansive, exquisitely detailed, and so fun to explore. The game does a good job telling you exactly what your next mission is, and the quests are varied and fun. They're not just fetch quests. Ron and Hermione join up in battles as the story dictates, and your pals even have their own special abilities to use. This game blows all the other versions out of the water. Number 4. Revelations the Demon Slayer This was quite possibly my first Atlas game, and it definitely was my first SMT game, although I didn't really know it at the time. It's extremely similar to Dragon Quest in its overworld graphics and dungeon design. You take on the role of L, a mage who's on a quest to become a Grand Wizard, and the story's nothing to write home about, but back then, we didn't really play portable games for their story, we played them for their gameplay and the thrill of discovery. The battle system is your standard turn-based affair, but with a twist of demon recruitment. Through the talk system, which I really can't tell you how much I HATE, but at least it's been fixed in the modern games. Considering that this little title was the West's first taste of the behemoth SMT franchise, it's pretty groundbreaking. Number 3. Star Ocean Blue Sphere I loved Star Ocean the Second Story, so whenever I read that there was a sequel to be released on the Game Boy Color, I was STOKED! Only, like so many RPGs in the 90s, it stayed in Japan. For years. In fact, it took well over 20 years for this little gem to finally get an English translation. And it's also more of a Gaiden than a sequel. The developers had some grandiose ideas, but they were definitely limited by their hardware. And despite having crafting, on-strain encounters, inventive puzzle-based dungeons, and a plethora of party members to choose from, it still kind of feels a bit lacking. Mostly because the little Game Boy Color just can't do justice to the action battle system that was so well refined on the PlayStation. But if you can look past that one little flaw, you have a solid entry into a great series. Number 2. Grandia Parallel Trippers Similar to the aforementioned Star Ocean Blue Sphere, this is a game to the original Grandia, with even more characters. Now you can recruit all of your enemies and allies from the first game, and then even more! I mean the roster is up to like 35 characters, though you can only use 3 at a time. And instead of using the great combat system perfected on the PlayStation, it now utilizes something a little bit more strange. You still have a turn order gauge where you can see whose turn it is to attack next, and you can cancel enemies' turns too, but it also introduces a card-based system which is inherently random. And like Bomberman Quest, Outside of Battle it feels more like Zelda, with platforming and puzzle solving to complete before moving on to the different worlds. It's not bad by any stretch of the imagination, it's just different from all the other Grandias. And finally, number one, Warlocked. This game is just fascinating to me. I remember back in like 1998, my father brought home a computer for the family. We really didn't make much of it, and we threw it inside the basement, but we did have some games on it that my brother played, and then eventually I got into too. Games like Minesweeper and Solitaire, of course. But we also brought Lemmings, and the extremely overhyped and BORING Mist and Riven. But we also got Warcraft, and that was definitely my favorite. Warlocked is just like that, with voice samples, quality music, readable scripts, in-game tutorials, fog of war, two unlockable minigames, humans vs. orcs, player vs. player battles, resource mining, and just all the things that you would expect from the original game. The campaign's relatively long with about a dozen levels on each side, this is not just something that you would expect on the system. You've humans and orcs, and if the Game Boy Color ever had an Overlook classic, this is it. Well, that's it for the top 10 best Game Boy Color JRPG hidden gems. If you like this video and what I did here on the channel, please consider supporting me over on Patreon for exclusive videos and early access to my content, heading on over to Twitch for some streaming fun, or coming on over to my Discord to chat and hang out. 
The links to them all can be found in the video description. This has been David, and if you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.